Welcome to Be Healthy in a Hurry with authors and speakers Benny Norlin, Buddy Lee, and Dr. Wayne the Mango Man Pickering. You'll learn tips, secrets, and new ways of thinking about mindset, physical fitness, and nutrition, and how they all play a role in a healthy lifestyle. Welcome to Be Healthy in a Hurry with Dr. Wayne the Mango Man Pickering, myself, Betty Norlin, and Buddy Lee. And today we have a very special guest, Dan Thurman. And Dr. Wayne, would you like to introduce Dan and then he can say hello to us? Actually, Dan, you can say hi first. How about that? Well, hello, Betty, and hello, Dr. Wayne. I can't wait for this conversation uh, with some of my favorite people. Thank you, Dan. Let me tell you, everybody, I've known Dan for now close to 30 years. He is, we uh, we met at the National Speakers Association one year, and his first, I think it was, what, the first year you were a member, I believe? And, uh, I mean, he's the author of two books. He's a Speaker Hall of Fame. He's recognized expert in delivering peak performances on stage and in the workplace. And wait till you see what he can do with his fitness and everything. He is just a, a genius. I mean, he's delivered thousands of presentations across six continents for business leaders. He has uh, TEDx talks that he's done. He's done troops on the front line, which I admire so much. I'm a uh, a, a, a war veteran myself, and I can appreciate that energy and spirit that you give. And he's even performed for royalty, which is wonderful. I was invited, Dan, to go into practice with the osteopathic physician who's treated the Queen of England for years. And it was a great honor when I was over there for almost a month speaking over there. But uh, so I can appreciate that accolade you have. Now, Dan's philosophy can be summarized by the, the title of his book, Off Balance, On Purpose. He believes that we will never achieve perfect balance and uh, rather that we should instead learn to embrace uncertainty and initiate positive changes that lead to growth, which is one of the things that I like to do when we bring the wisdom of the day into the fold here on our podcasts. He's, uh, in other words, things just don't happen, Dan, in life. They happen justly. There's divine design and all of the things that we do. So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready to expand your thinking, sharpen your focus, and have some fun. I, I know you're clapping right now, but get together, everybody, and clap your hands for the great Dan Thurman. <laughs> and welcome, Dan. It's going to be a great time with you. And Betty and I are both looking forward to our time together. Thank do you, you have Dr. anything? Wayne. We have known each other quite some time, and. Uh, yes, it was near the start of my speaking journey and also near the start of my marriage when we met. I Shortly after I, my wife and I, Shay, uh, Shelia, got married, then we were, um, I found the speaking industry and then I found you through NSA and we managed to be at your place on our anniversary, which was just so special. Wow. Uh, yeah, her, his first anniversary he spent right here at my uh, home. That's and very special. Yeah, and, and, since I, and I learned to properly cut and eat a mango, uh, <laughs> and it changed my life forever. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So in other words, you're not cutting your hands anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, Dan, it's funny because as we were talking before we started recording, he taught me how to open a coconut very easily and to peel an orange with a spoon. So there's just some fun things that, um, and you and I have both known him for many, many years. So um, it's just a lot of uh, fun ways to be healthy and eat healthy. And that's one of the things I'm so excited to have you here because I know that your company, I believe, is Motivation Works. And I know you talk about mind, body, and spirit, which is very much in alignment with our, uh, what we want to share with the audience. And I think that one of your focuses in being on our show today was to help people to understand kind of how to pivot with the COVID um, challenge that many of us experienced this past year. And I'm going to share with you, I'm a Libra. And so I'm always trying to find balance in my life. Like that's been my mission. And when I was looking at you teaching us that off balance is better, I would love you to share a little bit of your philosophy and anything that can help the audience to embrace being off balance. Yes. No, I, I'm a huge advocate of balance. But the thing to understand is balance is a verb. It's what you do. Balance is not what you get. You never attain perfect balance. And so people say, 
well, I just, when I get to a place in my life when I have more balance, then I'll be happy, then I'll be fulfilled, then I'll be at peace. No, you'll be at peace if you, are, if you become a better balancer. In other words, if you, uh, if you go on the journey of, of, a, of addressing that you have the ability to make a higher level uh, judgment of your circumstances, to have a perspective that serves you and enables you to make adjustments more quickly and more smoothly in the flow of life, then, then you're, you're constantly anticipating what's coming to a higher degree and adjusting to what you didn't expect without letting it throw you. And that is the art of balance. I love that explanation. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Now, Dan, let me ask you this, buddy. What got you in the speaking industry anyway? I mean, we all have a story of how we escalated into the different levels before we ever got to the National Speakers Association. What got you into that part of the industry? Well, it depends on where you want to start. I mean, when I, when I think about that answer, I think it was always within me growing up. It's just a natural part of what I was gifted with was the ability to express myself verbally and writing well, um, and also to understand, as I observed my teachers, different instructors in sports or activities that I was doing, you know, I would just watch how things were done or how they were communicated, and I always thought, no, that's not, it, it, you could do much better than that. Like, there's a better way to explain something. Uh, I remember sitting in some of my classrooms thinking, if I ever get to be in front of a classroom, I'm going to handle this situation a lot differently right now. <laughs> you know? So I guess I was learning, kind of studying the art of communication and education all my life. Um, and I just had a different perspective on things. Now, my mother is an artist, and she always told me, it doesn't matter what you do in life so much as how you do it, that any vocation can be an artistic exploration so uh and, and, a, and a contribution that's uniquely yours because every choice is informed by your intention by your purpose by how you want people to feel about it right it's it's a sense of pride in what you do all of that is art and so any business can be an artful pursuit and i learned so my so my mom taught herself to paint she ran an art studio out of our basement in chicago little polish neighborhood growing up on the southwest side and she would do these different festivals. She also, by the way, ran a pet portrait business where she did uh, illustrations, paintings of, of people's animals, their pets, their cats, their dogs, their horses, you name it. And she did those by mail for many, many years. Has done well over 1,000, or no, actually well over um, 50,000 pet portraits in her lifetime. So anyway, we were at one of these art shows, and I learned to juggle when I was about... Um, 11 years old at a fair. I saw a juggler one day. He was amazing. And I was very intrigued. And he asked me, do you want to learn? And I accepted that challenge. And it became a focus for this abundant energy inside of me. Uh, but it also became a great like track for life and success. And juggling is just such a beautiful physical activity. First of all, it's very good for you physically because it's a symmetrical activity with your body, like walking, like running, like biking you're using your whole body, but you're also using your mind because it's both spatial awareness, focus, discipline. There's a numerical aspect to it. There's a rhythmic aspect to it. They uh, have actually done research on juggling and discovered that the way your brain operates, there's all kinds of communication that happens across the hemisphere, right side of your brain, left side of your brain, spatially, visually, and it's a very healthy brain activity. So for me, and I didn't realize any of this at the time, but it served as sort of a, a meditation in excellence as a young man. And it gave me also something to be very proud of because when I started to achieve success with different skills and different levels, um, I began to work with my mentor. I developed my own show. I started performing on stages and this became my vocation. And again, because my parents always encouraged entrepreneurialism this is also how I paid for my college education as a business student. And I built my own business from a one-man show into a larger um, kind of enterprise in terms of booking other aspects of, of show business, producing events on our own, producing festivals. And this is what my wife, Shelly, and I were doing uh, early in our marriage. Now, along that journey, I also was a student of self-help, motivation, I loved listening to speakers on tape, 
great minds and thinkers and presenters, never anticipating this was something I was going to do one day. But it just, it served me. I wanted to learn from it. Like, um, you know, Zig Ziglar and Jim Rowan and Les Brown and one of my other favorite, Dr. Wayne's, Dr. Wayne Dyer, who was just a huge influence in my life. And some of these people who I began to listen to later became sort of friends and contemporaries like Brian Tracy. It's like crazy. Like you mentioned earlier before we went to recording Mark Vis Victor Hansen and just the people in this business. But I have to say when I found speaking and, and realized that this was what resonated with me so strongly because it's so much more important to leave audiences, not just with a smile or a laugh or I mean, that's wonderful. Or to be thrilled at the talents that I can show, but I want to help them discover the talents within them. And that's when everything flipped and all my skills in acrobatics, juggling, you name it. Like all of that background was redeployed in a way to serve as instruments and illustrations for what I really wanted to teach. And that became like a whole transformation because it suddenly wasn't about me anymore. It was about my audience and it resonated so strongly as purposeful. Wow. That's beautiful. Let me, let me comment on that. Uh, you, when you mentioned your vocation, I always tell my audiences, let your vocation be your vacation. Love what you do. And when you have the mind, body, and spirit all blended together, I have a, a little something here that I... Uh, uh, try to convey and get it into my audience's heart. Here's the deal about life. If we honor God, serve our fellow man slash woman, creating a service out of what we are genuinely passionate about so that everybody who is involved in the service has equal opportunity to gain, then we win. So our vocation has to be our vacation. And when you're, when you're talking, Dan, about the speaking portion of your, uh, 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 like, say, pursuit. I was first asked to speak when I made my very first food combining guide, which was 14 editions ago, and it'll be 44 years this October the 2nd when I first put that together. And I was asked to speak at a huge park uh, here in town. I get out there. I hated the experience. But I, I, my craving to be in front of an audience was good, but I didn't like the experience at all. So I, they told me that I was good and everything. I didn't believe that. So the, uh, about um, three months later, they called and asked if I would like to come back because they had a different audience. So I did. Again, I felt like I bombed. So what I decided to do is I joined the Dale Carnegie course. I did that for two terms, if you will. Like they invited me back and they gave me the second one free because I was, you know, I escalated. And then I went to the uh, Toastmasters meeting. And it was Heidi Gatz down in uh, uh, Miami or someplace down in that area that called me this one day. Dan, I'll never forget it. She says, Jew, Jew is wonderful. Jew need to belong to the National Speakers Association. Jew, Jew is good. I said, thank you. I said, do they pay you? No, you got to pay them. I said, really? Why would I want to join? So uh, she gave me Nito Cobain's phone number. Oh, my goodness. I called Nito. He actually called me back and turned me on to Dottie Walters. I called Dottie Walters. The three of us got on the phone, Nito and Dottie and myself. And... I wound up joining the National Speakers Association. Then I found a local chapter here in Tampa, and I was a member of that for several years. And uh, that's how I escalated. But boy, it is such a pleasure to walk out there in front of an audience and do the things that all three of us love to do. <clears throat> to see you do your performances. And pretty soon we're going to ask you to give your website that might have some and your, if you have any YouTube videos that people can actually go there and see what you do and to help maybe inspire those who have similar talents uh, and aspirations that you do to motivate them to keep going and quit listening to all this other craziness that goes on when people want to hold you down. Uh, what is it, Dan? With all that. <clears throat> yeah. 
What, do, do you think your audience knows much about it, NSA? <laughs> Uh, for, for, in a nutshell, the National Speakers Association began almost 50 years ago by one man, Kevin Robert, and a small group of friends who said, listen, this world needs us, and, and we can create an industry. There was no profession. When you think about it, this is crazy. There was no profession for public speaking or, like, it was very skeptical. People were very skeptical that that could even happen in that day and age. They were like, no, you could only speak in... Uh, conjunction with your business or on the side kind of thing. He's like, no, I, th I see I see this. I envision this. And you think of all the millions of people who've been impacted by professional speakers. And so NSA is where we go to learn from each other, to challenge each other. And the mission is really leveraging words to lift the world. Um, that's the, the vision of NSA. But I was just there a few, uh, two days this week. I was at headquarters in Tempe, Arizona, curating an exhibit about the founding of NSA. So it's funny you should bring that up. You know, wow. Dan, that, that is phenomenal. And it's so funny because when I was in my 20s, a few years ago, um, I had what I call a spirit, like like in my inner knowing, I, I believe it was a Holy Spirit, but in my inner knowing, there was this voice that came to me that said, motivational public speaking. And about six months later, there was the same voice that said writing. And I thought to myself, I can't do either one of those. Like, that's like, no way. But I listened to those voices. And um, with the speaking, I joined Toastmasters. And I figured when the opportunity comes, then I'll be ready. And so I was a member of Toastmasters for several years. And then I went through an illness that lasted about three years. I've talked about it on my pod, on the podcast prior, but um, I could only work part-time as I started healing from that. And so I ended up speaking uh, first on rape and burglary prevention. And then I did wellness programs at hospitals around the state of Florida. Um, and then I got into other speaking engagements before I got into education, which I've now been in for 20 years and I do some speaking in that arena. But I want to go back, Dan, to one of the things you said. You talked about with your juggling and with your acrobatics, um, and, I, and I'd love to learn more, but you talked about the movement across the, the um, both sides of the hemisphere of the brain. And I know in education with best practices, one of the things they really um, try to have us as teachers use with our students is cross lateral movement. So when we can do anything that crosses the center of the body, so you can get up and you can kick your feet, you know, to the left and to the right, you can push your hands to the left and to the right, but that helps the left and the right side of the brain to talk to each other more effectively to kind of get synergized. And so I think that's something that is very much in alignment with everything I've learned and used in the world of education. And I think that's something if people are listening and they want a way to um, just maybe connect with themselves better than just doing any kind of exercise where they're doing cross lateral, moving their hand from the left side of their body to the right side and, uh, and vice versa is really something great. I want to know about um, your acrobatics, but I also want to know about you and your daughter and TikTok. Can you tell us what's going on in that <laughs> world? Yes, it's kind of strange because, you know, I spent the last quarter century building my speaking business and deepening my content, writing books and speaking for audiences all over the world. And now I'm getting recognized for dancing on TikTok. <laughs> so <laughs> my daughter, um, Maggie Thurman, it's at Maggie Thurman on TikTok and it's T-H-U-R-M-O-N with an O. Um, she has at this point, I think 3.6 million followers on TikTok. She's a verified TikToker and on Instagram, she just released a song. So my daughter has, has really blown up on this cha channel. And a lot of that is the things that we do together because early on I did a dance with her and it was just fun. She said, Dad, come learn this dance with me. And it was a very physical challenge. And I, I, I love to move. You know, physical movement has always been my language of expression and certainly a huge part. My physical exercise is, is a part of my mental health, no doubt. If I'm not up and moving, I'm just not feeling right. You know, I've got to go. I've got to go. Some of us just need to go and run hard. You know, that's my job. But um, Maggie got me dancing. And one, we did one video that, the first video we did, we went to the gym, we played a game of racquetball, and by the time we got done with the racquetball, 
It had over 300,000 views and hundreds of thousands of likes. And that video now has over 30 million views. And, and we have many others like that too. But um, this platform, what people really connected with was our dynamic as father and daughter. Maggie is super talented on her own and a lot of her content is just her. But the things that we do together are either comedy or you know, just relational. We're gonna be launching a, a podcast together, she and I, because it just, it, in a lot of people's minds, it represents a healthy dynamic of a father-daughter relationship that they aspire to or you know, kind of wish they had in some ways. Um, but yeah, check out Maggie. I also have my own tic TikTok handle, which is Maggie's dad one, two, three. Because for me, it's all about supporting her. And I have started to do some of my content and encouragement on that as well. I have over 600,000 followers on my channel. But the, um, it's just a different audience. It's a different demographic, a different platform, one-minute videos or less, often much less. And it's been, a, it's been a really fun ride for our family. And for Maggie, it's turned into not only a, a great lucrative opportunity, but also she's met some wonderful people she admired. Very nice. Wow. Let me tell you, the, the, uh, you mentioned something a little while ago there, Betty, about, uh, and no, no, I'm sorry, Dan. You mentioned, well, both of you are on the same page, especially with the mental. And uh, there's a video that I watched. Dan, you, you, this would be nice if you haven't watched it. It's exceptional. It's 360 minutes, but it is six 60-minute episodes, and it's titled The Brain by – it's a PBS special. It is exceptional. The science behind all of that stuff they brought to the, the uh, platform there about the brain was phenomenal. And what you've shared in layman's terms uh, is, is so cohesive with that. It's wonderful. Yeah. But the other, the other thing that I liked is Dr. Amon's audio program, and it's a long, it's a 13 CD series that I I got, and it's called Change Your Brain, Change Your Body. Mm -hmm. Dr. Amon, A-M-E-N, he's a medical doctor, and the research they've done on that is incredible. So we've got to be in charge of our thoughts our thoughts yes. dictate our destiny. And, and you know, well, I, I've said this on a few of other podcasts. What we think about, we bring about. Yes, so it's well put. I love the way you phrase things, Dr. Wayne. Thanks. And just to give you a quick example of what we're talking about, with, and the audience will hear this in the podcast as well. You'll hear the, uh, the balls. I'm pulling out right now five juggling balls. And as far as, far, far as the discipline goes, one of my disciplines is – Every day, and honestly, I haven't done this every day this year, but, but for many years, I do it every single day. Don't miss a day. It's been that kind of a commitment and discipline. I do 1,000 catches with five balls. And so I, I start juggling, and I count the balls as they hit my right hand like this. And then as I'm doing this, when I'm, uh, I'm counting by twos, you know, six, eight, 20, two, four, and I get to 1,000, and I can stop. And if I drop, then I have to start over. And so it's a discipline of, wow. of both my skills. That way I can always stay ready for any audience. But I mentioned this once to a neuroscientist, a friend of mine named Scott Halford. You might know Scott as well. And he, um, he said, wait a second. Every single day you're counting while juggling and, you know, five balls and this multidimensional thing. I was like, yeah. He said, dude, your brain's going to last forever. Because in his mind, I was applying this mathematical thing with the spatial thing, with the bilateral movement and everything all together. And he said, I, I wish I could like map your brain while you were doing that because I bet it's lit up. And he probably right could with all the technology today. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just haven't that, done it. <laughs> that, and that brings me to another question. So I was sharing with you, I'm a speaker in my first career. I've been in education where I've also spoken in my second career and um, moving back in over the last five to seven years in speaking and coaching in the health and wellness area. But one of the things I'd like to ask you is you said when you were young, you watched your teachers and you kind of learn the art of communication. 
And the question I'd like to ask you now is what could you tell the youth? I teach middle school. What could you tell young people now as far as what they can watch for that they can use and apply in their future life? Well, so much of what's thrust upon you when you're young is not your choice, right? Where you go to school, what classes you're going to be in, who your teachers are, how things go. And I want you to know that you always have an opportunity to learn, even if it's not a good teacher, even if it doesn't, the, the in, entertainment or the, uh, the uh, material itself does not entertain you or present any kind of compelling, like, oh, I want to learn this. In fact, especially at those moments, start thinking about, well, why isn't it working? If this isn't my thing, then what is my thing? And, and you can always learn, like one of my, my wife and I always said, it's almost as much fun to watch a bad movie as a really good movie because you can kind of analyze, why isn't this working? Is it the director? Is the acting bad? Is the writing bad? And so you, you can always learn from any circumstance and situations, even if that is just how do I manage and learn about my own thought process? And even though it is tough to stay engaged, how do I find a way to stay engaged or at least to stay out of trouble to navigate the circumstances of life? Because even when you're older, there will be things that you get to choose to do and other things that you just have to find a way to do regardless of your circumstances and overcome. So you have to believe, like, like Dr. Wayne said, everything serves a divine purpose. You're there for a reason. And there's always something for you to do and learn in that moment. How true. How true. Dan, everything, as I mentioned uh, earlier, things in life just don't happen. They happen justly. And it was, I, I was at my lowest point in my life when suicidal, all that good stuff. You know, we all go through some challenges in our lives because if we don't, we're not experiencing life. And so I was able to talk to a family member a long distance. They were out in Canada and uh, he kind of got my thinking squared away and him not knowing what I was about to do. So. I got back to Florida and uh, there was a, I was sitting in the sauna bath this one day and some guy came in and gave me a three-step plan that within two weeks, you will know precisely what you're going to do for the rest of your life, guaranteed. I says, come on, here I've been, to, you know, and he said, well, what have you got to lose? You're going nowhere anyway. I said, you're right. <laughs> so we put we put an audio program together on that mango man career mango man career dot com. That's a three step plan. There's nothing to buy. You just click on that little website thing. And there's an audio that comes up that gives you that three step plan that within two weeks, you know exactly what you're going to do from now on. So when I did that, I was amazed at how that escalated my career with the speaking, with the writing, with the this, with the that. And, uh, you know, we go through life going to, like, say, institutes to learn, just like what you said a little while ago, that you're, got, you're sent to school to learn things, but not how to be, let's say, inventive, if you will. And I'm not condescending our education system, but I'm saying the reality <laughs> <Good>. of it is... <laughs> <laughs> but the reality of it is, it's true, isn't it, Betty, that we, we need to discover what we love to do. And one year when I was at the National Speakers Association, I was doing a uh, by, what do you call when you have two of the large ones, the by? Annual? Uh, uh, when you're at the annual convention, you have like the general, oh, split general. So I was okay. doing a split, a split general one year, and the lady, I forgot what her name was, asked me if I would like to do the youth program. And I thought about it, and I said, yes. And when you said you walked out there with the, the balls and stuff and juggling balls, I walked out there with a jump rope, with a yo-yo, because I was a junior high school yo-yo champion. I did not a, know that. 11... <laughs> 1150 loop de loops I did and when I uh, somebody said I don't believe that and I did 150 of them just to get going I said how did I ever do 1150 so <laughs> when I walked out there on stage Dan you'll love it and uh, I was started to do the yo-yo and I threw the yo-yo out there and the rope broke 
did I ever, I said, what is the blessing? I thought to myself, I said, well, number one, I had a, I had a backup. I had another one in the, in my kit. So I reached in there and I kept on going. I said, rule number one, always have a backup. And I kept on doing it. We go here, we go there. And I did it. So the whole point is this. I, I, the, the title of the presentation was, you know, discovering your greatness. And when I did that for that youth program, I am so impressed that for years and years later, kids who were in that youth program, who were sons of like Al Walker, Nita Cobain, uh, all, all of these other people that we all know, told me what a difference that made in their lives. So anytime that I, uh, some youth doesn't know what they're going to do, we'd love to give that away. So yes. You're welcome I to know, that anytime. Uh, I, w I believe I was there at that youth program presentation you did. You invited me because we were at the same convention. And it was something. It was very special. Um, and I also want to circle back to education because earlier when I said you can learn from teachers even if it's not working for you. But the best instructors I've ever seen in my life, the best models or examples of how I communicate on stage have been teachers as well. Those who really did resonate with me they saw not just a student in the classroom, but a, a soul and a person inside of the opportunity for a life to blossom. And they activated something within me, just, just the same way that my parents did or that the juggler did at that Renaissance festival when he said, hey, do you want to learn? I mean, that's the deal, is when, when teachers create those bridges, those moments of opportunity, it takes someone's willingness to step across the bridge, but we have to continue to offer the invitation, right? I think that's our job in this world is, is to continue to example life at its best in not necessarily mastery, but at least we're in the game. We're trying to make it happen. Like you said, if you, if you don't have down moments, you're not really living life. And I will say, if you don't address what led you th to those down moments and through those down moments, then you're not even in the game because it's really about uh, doing the work. And you could spend your whole life escaping the work of being okay with yourself. You know what I mean? You could be uh, addicted to alcohol or drugs, or you could just focus on escapism in a number of different ways or, or behaviors or relationships that distract you from the essential work of self-improvement, self-honesty, really. And only when you do that and humble yourself can you really begin to understand, wait, my life really matters. The way I live my life, I get one chance at this. I get to example something for the world, goodness, you know, trueness, health, positive behavior. I'm not important. Like, I, I'm, I'm just me, but my life is important. I'm the captain of that ship, and I owe it to the world to drive it with care. So, Dan, I know that you also do tremendous work globally around the world with many adults, many corporations. And I know you've had um, clients like Bank of America and Coca-Cola, Delta Airlines, Microsoft, um, Walmart, Johnson & Johnson, and many others. I know you've spoken on many continents um, and the list goes on and on. So you were sharing earlier about how to help kids, you know, learn in any situation. You just shared with us how to live by example. Are there any other things that you would like to share for the adult audience um, or potential clients that can just kind of shift to their thinking or bring them to a new awareness of their self or their surroundings? Uh, yes, I, I'm a firm believer that talent is hugely overrated. The idea of, of saying to somebody, like I've heard all my life, you're so talented. What I realized though is I didn't learn these skills any faster than anybody else. I was just more disciplined or determined. I, I wouldn't let it go. I was so like obsessed with the idea of learning. And that got me to a place where it became, began to look easy. Nothing's ever as easy as it looks. And yes, talent exists. We're all blessed with uniqueness and talents. And don't let anyone else's talents deter you from understanding and valuing yours. Because 
we will undervalue our uniqueness because we already have it. We don't understand its value or strength. So trust the people you respect when they see something in you before you see it in yourself. That's a big one. You got to trust that when somebody I admire says to me, I think you can do this, that's probably a good clue that you can. All the choices in my life, joining the, uh, you know, becoming a speaker, writing books, joining the NSA board, becoming president of the National Speakers Association, which I was just a couple of years ago, I, I never sought out to pursue those as goals. But I was just trying to be on principle, and that enabled me to kind of go in that direction. And the, the things that I've experienced and achieved in many ways are far greater than goals I would have dared to set because I was on principle. And, you know, it's really funny because I teach at an IB school, an international baccalaureate school. And this week we're focused on the different character traits and the character traits that we talked about today were integrity and principle. So, so much in alignment. And the other thing that's really interesting is I've been getting the lesson that you just shared for the last maybe two months, maybe three, but probably last two months of if somebody else sees something in you that you don't yet see in yourself, believe them. And that's been happening from different angles. So thank you for just kind of, kind of reinforcing that. Really great. It can be pretty annoying when it happens though. You're like, no, I don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, Dan, you mentioned something that was so beautiful a moment ago. Uh, and, and it centers around this little a uh, phrase that I'd like to keep in my mind all the time. When, we, when you've hit rock bottom, that's the best platform to start growing. Mm. You know, if and, you think, oh, Dr. Wayne, let me jump in and then let you continue. If you think about it, a plant, a seed that's put in the ground, where is that? It's at rock bottom. And it grows into this beautiful thing when it's nourished. And so I never thought about what you're saying with hitting rock bottom. But if you take the example from nature, that's where our plants start is rock bottom. Sorry, Dr. That's, Wayne. No, 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 that's okay, Daryl. That's, that's exactly how my sentiments exactly. And so that when we're on our bottom, but there's another thing that I have also learned, and Dan is a, 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 a marvelous example of this. I ask my audiences, how many times do you suppose Hamlet has been played? They'll say, I don't know, millions. I said, you're right. But when Richard Burton did it, Wow. Same message, mm. different messenger. So the messenger has to be more important than the message. So if you keep letting the dignity of your example be the message, you're going to change lives. Find out what you love to do and don't tell a soul what you're going to do because people are always down on what they're not up on. <laughs> and when we and when we go down the street, Dan, I know you know this very well. When you walk down the street, notice it's always the smallest dogs that make the most noise. It's always those small thinking people who want to hold you back. So associate yourself with people that are of like minds and that are supporting what you're doing. And a key word that I have learned in my tender years, if you will, is the word yes. I say that word every day, three times a day, morning, noon, and night, three different times. And here's, here's what it says. Yes, yes, yes. You'll enjoy success. The acronym yes. You'll enjoy success. Yes. And keep that going in your mind because what we visualize in our minds, we realize in time. And so if you have any other thoughts there, I would like to ask you this. You, you, uh, you uh, Tell us this. I know we're running short of time here, but what's more important, Dan, goals or principles? Talk to us. Hmm. Well, we alluded to that a little bit earlier. I think it's, you know, goals are really important because they, they teach us that we can envision a thing, go after it and get it. But to me, principles are so much more important because, a goal will take you to a specific place. A principle can take you beyond the goal and to goals that you haven't even envisioned and that are so much greater because when you're in alignment, when you're in alignment with a principle, um, like for example, in my life, fitness is a huge principle. That's why I go mountain unicycling as my workout routine because it's a 
personal interest and passion aligned with physical fitness that's just so darn fun. And it's helping me figure, you know, continue to work on balancing. And so it's very congruent with everything that I'm about. But any activity can be an expression of fitness. And all of that started for me when I said, I was reading some, some book, I think it was even Tony Robbins. I was a senior in high school, 17 years old, and I was trying to make lists or rules for my life. And as an acrobat, I was a gymnast in high school. One of my first rules, and I said, how do I phrase this in a way that I can express to my future self, like I wanna be active, I wanna be healthy. Um, I remember do, learning to do a back tuck. Someone always said to me, as long as you do it, you, you can always do it. And here I am 52 years old and I can still do a back tuck and my goal is to do one at 60. You know? And so I wrote that in my journal. I wrote, I can always demand extra effort from my body. That was the statement. And that principle really is remarkable that it still holds up to this day that I always want to be at that next level standard, extra effort. And extra effort means different things when you're 17 or 52. When you're 17, it's like I could throw myself off any building and land on my feet and like get out of it. At 52, it's about being, make sure you, you don't get injured. I'm, I'm taking the right risks with great care. I'm using my efficiency of movement perfectly um, because you know what? I want to be able to, when my kids have their own kids, I want to be the, the fun grandpa that can play with them, right? So that's, that's a wonderful example of, of a principle in action. Um, I, I want to close or, or maybe just add one more thing about what you said about rock bottom. I think it's important to recognize you don't have to be at rock bottom to make life-changing choices. You know, in, in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, they have a saying, or in any kind of 12-step program, you, ha oh, you, you hit bottom. A lot of times you have to hit bottom in order to grow. Don't believe it. I got sober 18 years ago because I recognized for me, alcohol was not serving my life. It was really uh, challenging things and it wasn't congruent with who I wanted to be. And the way I looked at it was I'd hit a ceiling. Nothing in my life was gonna get better until and unless I removed this from my life pattern and I wouldn't be a better speaker, I wouldn't be a better business owner, I wouldn't be a better father, you know, husband, friend. And that one choice made from that different perspective of I'm not at the bottom, I'm, I'm at the ceiling. And maybe it's gonna start taking a nosedive here if I don't do something about it. But it's because I wanna grow. It's not because I'm trying not to crash. I love Good. that. I love Good that. one. I love you know, that. Yeah, do you know, uh, Dan, I tell people this, we must listen to our bodies, feel our bodies, and quit trying to appease a condition when all we really have to do is stop causing it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I tell, and, but it all boils down to choice or chance, doesn't it? And nobody likes change except a wet baby. <laughs> so, uh, what we need to do is when we take the word choice and we take the word chance, it, the only difference between those two words is the OI and the AN. If we will take our life by make uh, the right choices, especially when it comes to our health, the OI, we will oust illness. But if we take our life by chance, the AN, we will always need. <laughs> so we need to be proactive and not reactive, especially when it comes to our health, our passion in life, our aspirations that we want to do. And uh, uh, can I share a little piece of wisdom with everybody, Betty? Am I okay to do that? Yeah, um, you I, know what? First, first, I have to just recognize you are the master of, of memorable sayings and acronyms. And it's next level, like super star level to use the word <laughs> what's oist? <laughs> no, sorry, oust, <laughs> oust. To use the word oust, I'm going to oust illness. I've never heard of the word oust in an acronym in my life. Dr. Oh, Wayne. no. <laughs> Thank <applause>. you. <laughs> I, would, I would agree. And, you know, before, so Dr. Wayne, I'm almost ready for the wisdom, but Dan, I know you talk about creative commitments, and I'm really curious about what you have to say about that before we go to Dr. Wayne to begin the closeout process. Okay, sure. So uh, creative commitments, I threw that in our 
talking points as an idea. Because for me, one of the things I've, I do, for example, I mentioned my thousand catches every day to stay committed to physicality and also keeping my skills sharp. Um, creatively, as an author and speaker, and I'm sure both of you have the same experience, we have to be fulfilling promises we've already kept, like writing in our blogs, writing in our journals. I publish a weekly video every, every Tuesday morning that lands at 6 a.m., for free to the world, which is available on my website to anyone who wants to follow it. It's a two and a half to three minute, really well-produced uh, coaching video that I do from wherever I am in the world. My son, Eddie, edits the, the video itself. And so it's a collaboration with my son and with my wife, who's also involved with it. Um, and so it's very connected and congruent to my life journey. But by having these, people say, how do you produce such a high quality original video every single week. And I was like, no, you don't, you don't get it. I produced the video because I've made the commitment to do it. Like I've been keeping this promise every single week now for three and a half, four years. And I haven't missed a week yet. And so it's the promise that's pulling something out of me. Right. And so that's what I mean by a creative commitment. You've got to put yourself into a situation where you're on the hook to contribute. And when you do, like saying yes to you guys, saying yes to being on this amazing podcast, I had no idea what was going to come out of it. But look what we've created in this short time together. It's been really special and meaningful to me. And hopefully, for those who are listening, there have been, you know, some kind of unique combination of our perspectives that manifests for them in an awareness and alertness and a choice in their life that can help them take it to the next level. Thank you, God Dan. bless you. Thank awesome, you. Dan. Awesome. So, Dr. Wayne, let's hear from you. Okay. Keep this in mind, everybody, in your life, especially when it comes to all this thinking of the past and all this. What is it? Your past has to be a point of reference, not some place of residence. So, yesterday's hours are canceled checks, tomorrow's minutes are promissory notes. But today's seconds are the only cash we have. Invest them wisely. And your best choice of investment is you, the miracle of the wonderful you. You are such a miracle. Do you know that uh, all these series that Betty and Buddy and all of our guests have uh, been on, uh, I've mentioned many, many, well, hundreds of different miracles of that wonderful you. And here's two good ones I want you to keep in mind. Do you know your heart pumps over 2,000 gallons of water every day? And when you sneeze, you hit speeds as much as 100 miles an hour? God, I was shocked. So what we want to do is to start thinking about how do we feed this wonderful you? Got a great recipe. It's called my cashew asparagus salad. Take one pound of fresh asparagus and there's two vegetables I never cook. Okay. Asparagus and spinach. Asparagus becomes an uh, asparagoid, they call it. And then as hard on your... Uh, your kidneys and the spinach has an oxalic acid that manifests in the body in some very negative ways so i never cook asparagus i cut it up in little small pieces and here's the way i do it this is my cashew asparagus salad you take a pound of fresh asparagus spears that's the top that like uh like okay the spears you're going to take a half a cup of raw unsalted cashews and a little bit of basil powder. Mm -hmm. Now, what you do is you just wash off the asparagus spears. That's that whole stock, if you will. And then I pick them all up, put them around my hand, and I just bend at the bottom all of the, the ends of it. And the ones that snap off, they go in my mulch and the top ends or the further up the, from that bottom end, is where I cut them in quarter-inch slices. Now, here's the recipe for that. You're going to wash the asparagus and rinse in distilled water, leaving a little water on the asparagus. 
you break the bottoms off, as I indicated a moment ago, and throw away. But then you're going to cut those spears in uh, uh, anywhere from a quarter to a half inch slices, and you're going to put those in a salad bowl with that little bit of dampness of the water. You're going to grind up the cashews in a coffee grinder, and you're going to sprinkle the powder all over those dampened asparagus. And then you'll sprinkle a little pinch of that basil powder on the top and toss like a salad. You'll be impressed as how good that is. That is absolutely delicious. And when people are always asking me, where do we go to get your recipes? I said, go to mangomanrecipes.com, mangomanrecipes.com, and you will have 400 recipes. And every one of them that's in there is all because we need to eat foods when they're in season when they're, uh, if they can grow in your type of environment, if they can match up with the type of activity that you're involved in, eat them in a compatible combination with your body's digestive chemistry, respecting your acid alkaline balance, and try to eat more raw than cooked. I've learned this. If it's not fit raw, it's worse yet cooked. So when you go to Mangleman Recipes, every one of those recipes is uh, dot com. Every one of those recipes in there are all per month. Here's all your uh, April recipes for breakfast, and then the lunches, and then the dinners. This one here is the one that we have for April for an evening salad. So enjoy, and back to you guys. Oh, by the way, if you want to be tough, you've got to eat good stuff. Back to you guys. And so, Dan, I would love for you to share again how people can find you and then any closing thoughts you have for the audience. Sure. My website is danthurman.com. Uh, there's my books there. My videos are there. There's a lot of, there's a wealth of content. Not as much as Dr. Wayne, but nobody has more content than Dr. Wayne. True. <laughs> I, uh, I, but, you know, I, I've been doing it a long time as well. And so if you look back at my coaching videos, those are searchable and you can find something that works for you. You can subscribe to what's coming next. And you can also reach out to me via the, the links in the bio. Um, you could also go to tiktok.com if you really, really won't want to get to know me. Download the TikTok app and follow at Maggie Thurman and at Maggie's dad, 123 and you'll learn some things that um, most people don't know. Um, <laughs> and uh, just I, final thoughts. I, I put myself in a very present state for this conversation and just kind of wanted to flow with the both of you because I respect you so highly and I respect this audience. I think there's just a tremendous amount of amazing potential because, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, what that means is you're serious about your life. You want to get better because you want to experience a better life and you deserve it for sure. You deserve better health and better food and, and better thinking. And, but really it goes beyond that. It's about, your contribution because you'll be on this earth for a transient period of time, like billions before you and billions yet to come. The impact that we make is real on those we love. It is substantial and exists in some way like ripples in time forever, but increasingly less so uh, as we, as we pass. What happens is the time that we have here, can multiply in ways you'll never understand because of how people perceive you as living your life. The integrity, the choices, doing good for the right reasons, for the right people, you know, being positive in the midst of neg negativity. That multiplies and you never know who's in your audience because your life example becomes the inspiration for others. And that is the pattern that continues to grow. I love that. Thank you, Dan. And, you know, as I teach math to middle schoolers, one of the things that fascinates me is patterns. I think of math as so much more than just numbers. It's patterns. It's, it's figuring out why things work. And one of the um, people that I model a lot in my book and in my workshop and in the programs I do is Leonardo da Vinci. And, and it's also because of observation. He teaches us how to observe. And he's taught us so much about our body and about art, like your mom with the artist. Um, and so that really resonates with me, but the patterns I think are important. And I think one of the things you said earlier is it's just a moment in time that makes all the difference to somebody. And in some of the reflections we've done this week with my students, um, as we talk about different character traits that are just good character traits, I shared a story 
probably 20 years ago or longer, I was in a bummed out mood. I was feeling sorry for myself. I was not happy. That's not my normal, but that's, that's the zone that I was in on that particular moment in time. And I walked into the local grocery store and a guy that works there said, you know, you always have such a smile on your face. You just lift me up so much every time you come in. That made such a difference. That one random comment 20 plus years ago has lived with me forever and it's made and it's touched my heart and it just brings a smile to my face often. And so you never know the moment in time, the moment you say or you do something. And the quote that I'm going to leave us with today is one that we kind of were sharing uh, with students this week. And it's by somebody I haven't heard of called Alfred Adler. But I want you guys to think of this as you carry on with your week. Empathy is seeing with the eyes of another, listening with the ears of another, and feeling the heart of another. Until next time. Be healthy in a hurry with mind, body, and nutrition. Skip the fad diets. Seize the opportunity to use common sense and natural techniques to enhance and enrich your life and health. And be open to new ideas in perspective, movement, and food combining. If you loved our show with Buddy Lee, Betty Norlin, and Dr. Wayne the Mango Man Pickering, and want to help us keep making the world a healthier place, become part of the Be Healthy in a Hurry movement by listening often, sharing regularly, and supporting this show. Look for Buddy Lee's latest book, 101 Best Jump Rope Workouts, designed to help you experience real and lasting fitness. Visit www.manglemanbooks.com to order any of Dr. Wayne's 25 books and pick up Betty's book, Our Bodies, The Optimal Design. And of course, visit us at BeHealthyInAHurry.com. It takes all of us working together to make a positive impact.